There are lots of things in modern engineering that are too dangerous or boring or unpleasant for humans to do. And that's where automated and robotic systems can come in, allowing us to take a step back and control the situation from a comfortable distance, whether that's in a nuclear power plant or deep at the bottom of the ocean. And we're now starting to take more and more inspiration from nature for these systems, using a field known as biomimetics. I'm here at a very busy science museum in London to find out more about this and see a very unusual creature, a robotic octopus. This funny looking creation is the work of an international team of engineers led by the Santana School of Advanced Studies in Pisa. But although it's attracting a lot of attention from the kids at the Science Museum, it could also have important implications for those developing industrial robots because of its soft structure. Uh, with this project we wanted to demonstrate that soft robotics is possible and to find some solutions. Of course there may be others, but uh, at least we found some solutions to have a soft material robot and some kind of actuators. Um, then we can think of many applications where a soft body can be helpful. First of all, we are thinking of explorations in the, in the sea and underwater explorations because uh, this kind of soft robot can really go in contact with the sea bottom, for example, or some other kind of manifest to explore. Uh, this is not possible with existing robots because they are rigid and they cannot uh, touch the sea bottom, otherwise they destroy, for example, the coral reef or other uh, types of, of sea bottom. In order to create a robot with a soft body, the team studied the fibrous structure of animal muscles and came up with a mesh design for a material that was both strong and incredibly flexible. This was paired with sophisticated actuators that control its movement and shaped into arm-like structures in order to build the octopus. The octopus robot is composed by eight arms and the structure base that is the platform that holds all the arms. Six of the arms are used for locomotion, so they are simpler. They have this skin outside and suckers for sticking on the ground and they implement a simple mechanism that is shown here where the arms when they are coordinated so the opposite arms are coordinated they implement the crawling mechanism and the, the crawling locomotion of the octopus these are the simplest arm of the of the structure the two arms that are in front of the robot so this is the, the front part of the robot um, are these two arms that are a little bit more complex because they are in charge to implement more sophisticated behaviors. They are able to, for example, elongate, to shorten, to bend in any direction and also to stiffen. And this is due to their structure and the material that they are made. We have inside a structure that is a braided structure that is used to hold in position all the, these black springs and the black springs are the real uh, core of the, of the capabilities of the arms because they are artificial muscle that they can contract when they are heated up, so activated by current. This method of heating the structure to cause it to expand and contract was key to controlling the movement of the octopus's arm. When the radial springs are activated, the structure can be elongated. Here we can see in this black one that we can reach this elongation and together with the bending by uh, shrinking this structure. Here we can see it also faster. Okay, and this is the implementation of the radial muscles of the octopus. This breakthrough in soft robotics is being used not just to create devices for undersea exploration, but also to navigate another difficult to reach location inside the human body. Another application that came pretty soon uh, is in surgery. And uh, we have some colleagues here in London, by the way, at the King's College who are experts in uh, robotics for surgery. And they asked us to collaborate with them in order to use the octopus technologies to build a soft endoscope that can navigate uh, easily inside the human body, but can also apply forces when needed. 
courses, for example, to do small intervention, like I mean, taking a piece of, of tissue or things like simple things like that.